The DJI OM5 has been the biggest selling gimbal on Amazon since it came out. And I would imagine the new DJI OM6 will probably take that place if not already. But personally, this is what I think this gimbal belongs to, okay? Actually, you know, thinking about it, there is a group of people that are actually gonna enjoy and love this gimbal, which happens to be the very people that DJI is actually targeting this gimbal to. But before we get into my review or my roasting of this gimbal, <laughs> is there anything good that I can say about this gimbal? And okay, yes, there are a few things. I do like the way this gimbal locks. Yeah, it's very nice for transporting. I do like the fact that um, it's easy to turn it on and the clamping mechanism is, is good. Yeah. That is nice, it's very quick to put away. The MIMO app is probably the best thing this gimbal has going because it's actually a very functional app and I really enjoy using it. This is all the good that I think in my opinion this gimbal has, okay? Because there are so many things that are not good or not ideal for someone that films horizontal, okay? This gimbal is actually good if you do vertical filming. So anyone doing TikTok videos, YouTube shorts, Instagram stories, this gimbal is actually all right because you put the gimbal on a table and you do your thing and that's it. You know, you might be doing some uh, vlogging or talking and they want to get them up on whatever platform they use as quick as possible. So they end up using the front selfie lens. They don't use the rear lens, which is infinitely better than the selfie lens. So this is the target audience for the DJI OM6. Now, all these reviews that you watch on YouTube are content creators that more often than not, they shoot horizontal and they try to sell it to you like this is the best thing since the invention of the cheese, okay? <laughs> this is not a good gimbal. The first thing you want a gimbal to do is to make sure that you can do an up and down and down and up movement. This is something that you cannot do with this gimbal, okay? You cannot do that movement, but you cannot do so many moves. This is a Zeon Kren M3, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by the most basic and simple move. And it's just as simple as you going down and up. This is a Fated G6 Max. It's about two years or two and a half years old. It's much older than the OM6, but look, I can do the movement down and up, up and down, okay? And this is the most simple and basic move any gimbal should be able to do. So only on that, I would not recommend this gimbal and I would literally send it back. This gimbal is a repackaged version of the OM5. The same issues remain here. And I hope you can watch this video to the end because I would hate that you spend money on a gimbal thinking that it's gonna do something good for you and it's gonna turn out to be a waste of money. Now you can totally vlog with this gimbal, but I don't think this is the best way to vlog, okay? Because what you want to do is you want to use the real lens. Now the problem with this gimbal is that you cannot do that comfortably, okay? They don't have a feature to spin the gimbal around. so. It's very, very limited, you know? In that regard, as you can clearly see, this gimbal is designed for someone that is gonna be vlogging like this, okay? This is how this gimbal is designed to be used. The problem with the selfie lens is that more often than not, you end up looking at yourself on the screen rather than be looking at yourself in the lens, which is what you should be doing so that your eyes are actually looking at the audience and not to whatever it's on the screen, okay? So in that regard, this is another reason why this gimbal may actually not be that good for someone that shoots horizontal. But if you are a TikToker that is doing some silly videos, you know, dancing, and you want that to be up on whatever platform, this is a great gimbal. I mean, who cares about color spaces and grading? I mean, who grades when you go on TikTok? So if you are someone that shoots vertical most of the time, this gimbal, it's great, I genuinely mean that. But if you're someone that shoots horizontal, there are so many wrong things with this gimbal. I am fairly tall and a lot of the times I need to record people that are shorter than me, okay? So if I need to do that, I need to slightly angle the gimbal because this is how you want to use the gimbal. You want to use it in an angle so that you are actually using the three axes and not two axes as you do when you hold it like this, okay? So you want to hold it like this. And this is fine for a bit, but as you can see, the gimbal's uh, tilt angle is very limited, okay? So 
If I'm filming someone that is shorter than me, which happens to be many, many times, and I struggle already because I cannot have the phone flat looking at them. I need to sort of reduce the angle and it's already making it uncomfortable for me. Even worse, if I try to film someone shorter, like children or my kids or dogs, animals, whatever floats your boat, it's really gonna be very difficult because you then have to be like this, in this angle. And this is not how you want to operate the gimbal, really. I mean, you want to be able to hold it like this and do this movement, and you don't want this flapping about that the phone is doing. <laughs> it's just laughable. Just to look at it makes me laugh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you might be fooled when you watch these uh, reviews that they tell you that, you know, this is really cool because, you know, you can pack it away and put it in your pants and then off you go and, uh, you know, okay, that's a possibility, but, you know, let's face it. When was the last time you went out on a Friday or Saturday night on the piss with a gimbal packed in your pants, okay? <laughs> it's realistically, when when you ever casually take a gimbal with you for a walk with the family, to take the children or the dogs out, or go with some friends to the pub or to a club or a night out. When? When are you gonna have this thing packed in your pants that looks like you have a massive dildo hanging in your pants? I mean, when? <laughs> <laughs> you are never going to. So that's a pointless argument, okay? If you feel what I'm saying so far makes sense and it's worth sharing to other people, hit the like button so that the YouTube algorithm can recommend this video to other people and save them from buying this piece of garbage. And even better, hit the subscribe button so that the channel keeps growing in numbers and we can keep on doing videos like this one. <laughs> that was my shameless plug of the channel. Let's go back to the video. This review wouldn't be fair if I don't actually talk about some of the good things that this gimbal has because it's impossible to have a gimbal that everything is bad. One thing that I really like is the fact that you can now change the modes directly onto the gimbal itself and you get a little LCD strip that tells you which gimbal mode you're using. So that's really, really good. And also this jog wheel. You just need to press one button and it switches between zoom and focus. Now, the problem I have with this is that, let's say zoom, okay? When was the last time you actually zoomed halfway through a shot? You just basically don't do it. And then the focus, okay, that's nice to have it. When was the last time you did manual focus on a smartphone? These phones, they have a very wide depth of field. It's not shallow at all. So you actually end up having a better result if the phone does it for you than if you actually do tapping on the screen and, and do all of that, okay? You are hardly ever gonna do manual focus. So having this jog wheel to give you the ability to focus or zoom, I, I don't know. What I think would be really nice is they give you functionality that you can actually use. For instance, if they give you the ability to choose two focal points, so you have a box, that you can set on one place that you want to be focusing and then have another box on, say, another place that you want to rack focus to. And then this button, you could press it and switch between one and the other and then control the speed of the ramping of the focus. That would be a very functional feature that would be actually useful. In the OM6, just as with the OM5, you do get this selfie stick, which is actually useful. It's practical if you use the selfie front lens, that's the whole purpose of it. You know, it's long enough if you reach out a little bit so that it doesn't look like, you know, you're stretching your arms. So that's a feature that is actually helpful. Something good that at least this gimbal does. Let me illustrate to you the problem I have with the low mode with this gimbal, okay? You could argue that there is a way to do this shot where you actually hold the gimbal like this and you go up like this, but that's not the right way to hold a gimbal. But then the moment you try and do that, you know, you get this spin that is, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not what a gimbal should do. The Mimo app is probably the best thing this gimbal has going, especially now that third-party apps like Filmic Pro, they've gone into monthly or yearly membership, and most people won't do it, including myself. So yes, it's nicely laid out, and you get to do pretty much anything that you should be able to do, and yet, they're still missing the point of not giving you the most basic professional features. For instance, you don't get to use DJI's flat color space, DC, so that's a big negative for me, okay? And another one is that you don't get to use either a histogram or false color. They're just not there. For TikTokers, 
Instagram uses, for stories, or YouTube shorts. Most people don't care about any of these things. They just want to shoot something quick and upload it to the platform. So in that regard, this is perfect for them. Less to think about, less to worry about. But if you are someone that cares about image quality and to make sure that everything is correctly exposed, <laughs> These are things that the Mimo app should have, you should get, but you're not getting. And how about the tracking feature, you might ask? Something that everybody's raving about, and it's something that I personally think is completely useless and a waste of time. And let me explain to you why. You tap on the screen and you draw a box on top of whatever it is that you want the gimbal to track. And yes, it will track it. More often than not, it will do a good job. It's designed mostly for selfie filming. Now you might decide that you want to use the tracking feature with the real lens and that's also a possibility. The problem with that is that whatever it is that you ask the gimbal to keep tracking, it will always keep it in the middle of the frame. So any creative shots where you might want the person to be slightly on the side of the frame because maybe there is something else going on in the other frame or any creative composition goes out the window because the gimbal will always keep the person or whatever it is that you ask it to track in the middle of the frame. So that again means that you have a very limited range of creative moves, you know? And the problem as well is that Sometimes, because it has to keep everything in the middle of the frame, you get this weapon uh, effect because the gimbal has to quickly compensate because whatever it is that is tracking is gone off the middle of the frame. So <laughs> it's just, it's a feature that promises a lot, but unless you use it on a selfie uh, lens, in my opinion, I think it's a feature that you should not use. I don't know when, when was the last time you ever used the tracking feature, really, honestly. Gimmicky features like the face beauty effect or the air editor are things that I don't really know what they do in a gimbal. I personally think is BS marketing, probably because they try to hide the fact that the product that they sell is not very good. So they pile up a lot of pointless features that they don't really do any good and you can't actually do anything with it, okay? So, for instance, dynamic zoom, okay? When was the last time you've seen a video using that effect? Never! <laughs> I haven't. I mean, it might be a shot that occasionally on a feature film has been done to highlight the sense of panic or stress, but it's not something that you are going to go and do, you know, filming your son or your dog or your wife or whatever it is that you film, okay? So that's another pointless feature that is there inception mode or the spinning mode when was the last time you've seen a shot in a video recently i mean not even recently in the last five years where they've used that angle very 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 rarely because nobody uses it because it's a pain it's really difficult for the brain to process the movement so it's really disturbing so nobody uses it okay so again they throw it like it's you know, it's something that you are going to be using all the time. I know you are not ever going to use that feature. Please stop being drawn to products with features that look good on paper, but they actually offer pointless functionality in real life. This is not a good gimbal unless you film vertical. But if you film horizontal, I cannot recommend this gimbal in any way, shape or form. I just want to make this video to warn people what they're going to have to go through if they buy this gimbal. And then if after all of this, you still think this is the right gimbal for you, hey, you know, who am I to tell you that you cannot use this gimbal? You know, I am just some dude. <laughs> and if after this decimating exercise, you still want to get yourself a gimbal, but wonder what other cool shots you can achieve with it, I've got this video here where I give you some 10 cool and really creative shots that you can do with a gimbal and a monopod. So click on it and I'll see you there.